Welcome back to the edge of your seats and game four of Misfits versus SK Telecom T1. Misfits one game away from being able to make history across the boards for being the first Western team or a team ever to beat SK Telecom T1 at Worlds. I mean, I'd one up you. I'd say they've already made history. And Boom. With, with the way that they're yeah. playing, no one has ever challenged SKT in a quarterfinal like this. No Western team has ever made you think that they can take down this team and win three games. And no Western team has succeeded in bringing their own meta as well into this best of five series. The man on your screen right now, Ignar, he's already a legend. He's constantly showing us new picks where he can be aggressive. The Leona we had before, we had Blitzcrank as well. He never stops. He's always ready to fight. He's always ready to engage onto SKT. And they can't deal with him at the moment. They, they're running around. They, they're panicking. They're not getting the defensive vision up. They're taking fights they don't need to take. And it just seems that they're buying into this entire crazy aggressive style we're seeing from Misfits. And I mean, now it's a big challenge you have to think for Coma to actually calm the team down, to give them a draft and win conditions that they feel comfortable with going into this game against Misfits because when there's so many picks you have to worry about, what do you really focus on in pick man? You need to get stronger early game champions. Two games in a row, SKT have drafted a lot of scaling, especially in the bottom lane. We had the Vayne in the last one, trying to be a counter pick to Le Leona. Did not work at all here for Bang. He got shut down early. He barely had an impact during this game here. You need some early aggression. We had Caitlyn in the first game to at least go even against Hansama and Ignar in that lane, and then they played around Huni instead on the Jace. But Misfits are back on blue side. They can ban the Galio, they can ban the Jace again if they want to and remove those two power picks from SKT. Final ban here from SK Telecom T1, Janna, Galio, and Jace, much like the second game Misfits played from the blue side. And they will be able to get the bans they want there. See what their first pick is with SK Telecom's last ban. I almost feel like for SKT, you'd want Misfits to play Lulu. Yeah, you so don't actually I, want to I feel that. like banning Lulu is actually a, a poor choice against this team specifically and what they're trying to do because you know they're trying to go for these crazy aggressive supports. That is not what Lulu wants at all. If you can make them take it, then I'll help you up your style. I like taking Tristana away here. This goes into the theme of Bang getting a stronger early game, more safety as well with this AD carry. And it's, of course, a, an AD carry that we've seen already uh, Hansama show up on a big time in the series. He does have the opportunity to go for something like a Caitlyn though. If they actually wanted to try to have some sort of early sieging type yep. pick for Hansama to allow him to try to play aggressive in this style, they could go for that. Ooh. This was actually banned out by Misfits the other game to keep it away from SKT in the composition they wanted. It only meant the Misfits could go forward more and so does the pick. And it's considered a pretty good matchup into Tristana because the way Ooh, that the spell shield team. works into the explosive shot of Tristana. So you can time that, yep. you can mitigate so much of that damage uh, from the Tristana and you have this very heavy kind of pushing wave clear type style with Sivir that can be very strong and SKT on their side at the moment. They don't have a support just yet. Don't want to lock it in either. Tarek is one of the choices you have against a potential common support. If you also want to match the art center, but we get Baker's Rise instead. This will be really interesting because now Power of Evil does have the opportunity to counterpick and actually push this down uh, to a bot lane Karma, but they yes. did see a lot of success with the mid lane Karma. And you know, keeping that flexibility in the draft has proven pretty vital. Now this pick for Faker obviously again gives him a chance to go to his side lanes, either to be aggressive and get a kill or to defend in case Misfits are playing so far forward as we've seen already in game two and game three. And again, that's where Ryze's ulti is important. It also gives you a very strong 2v2 skirmish. If you have a Javan jungle and a Ryze, you can take down most 2v2s around mid lane. Certainly agree, but even on the Talia last time, it didn't feel like Faker was really able to have as much of an impact in the side lanes that he wanted. He did have you know, some good ultimates. He did have a nice roam pre-6 down that picked up a couple kills, but this has not been a game where lane success has equaled the victory for Faker. You know, he has been doing very well in the last couple of games, but right. never really able to actually find the fights that he wanted. Yeah, tough for him when his bot lane is being destroyed, basically. Yeah. Two games in a row. Max is spending all his time around Hansama and Ignar as well to try and make sure they're winning this 2v2 even harder. So they do remove that Tarek we mentioned just before here as one of the answers to the potential Karma support. Han still available, though, is something Wolf is super comfortable on. You have to wonder, does Misfits have another type of counter towards that? 
to see there's also a pick like Nami that of course Wolf used to play a lot. If you want to have a stronger laning phase, it is a choice, but Nami is just not great in the current meta. We get the flex trundle instead. Can both go top and down to support. But if you are talking about early game, while I do agree Nami is not nearly as strong in the team fighting as some of these other champions, she has a very powerful lane, right? And when you're pairing that up with the Drasana, you can perhaps push it and you can bully out your opponents because we give credit still to the SKT late game. If they can get there without being behind, they could still make something happen. Okay, I was about to say, are we going to get like a Sejuani <laughs> top here and an Israel jungle coming in? But uh, it's going to be the Cho'Gath, so Huni can take the Trun top lane for himself. And Play that into this Joker here from Alfari, and we still need to see if we get another crazy support pick. Blitzcrank is available in this game here. Yeah, because the, the honest truth is, for now, this has been pretty standard. There's no massive aggression coming out of Misfits, and there's no really good way to actually force massive early game advantages. So, Alistar is that. Oh, okay. Alistar, again, we're going to have the flex karma to mid lane. We're going to have Alistar down there in the bot lane. It's going to be so much on Ignar to find these early fights, to find advantages. Now, will SKT put the Trundle top against the Cho'Gath or keep him bot lane against the Alistar? Braum is another one because now we're going away from these pure art and sense of supports and you start getting back to some of the old tank matchups yep. where you could pick a Braum against things like an Alistar. So what while I do think this is a great matchup, we have to remember that Misfits actually found a way to still have Arden Sensor in their composition with the mid lane Karma, whereas Bang will never have that, right? So yeah. despite the fact that they could have a strong 2v2, when you get to the team fight stage, if this Sivir is even or even ahead and is backed up by the powerful shielding of this Karma, by that Arden Sensor, it gives Hansama such a big advantage. SKT banking on Karma falling off in the late game and saying even if he gives Arden Sensor to this A to carry, we can still win late game team fights. They have the Tristana on the side of Bang, and of course, we know Trundle in the late game when he's stealing all these stats from the tanks is a complete monster. Game point for Misfits versus SK Telecom T1. In quite convincing fashion, these games have gone 25 minutes for both teams, and then our first long game right there as both teams were really measuring each other and figuring out how to stop the aggression, or in Misfit's case, how to keep applying it. And you look at these pick and ban phases, and you just, you couldn't really predict this. You couldn't prepare for this exact pick and ban phase we're getting, where suddenly we're moving away from a lot of these standard supports we've seen all of Worlds. Yeah, we knew the Blitzcrank and the Thresh would be options, but then yep. Leona as well coming in, and now an Alistar. And I think that's the beauty of it. That is why this is working. Because SKT, we talk so much about preparation, preparation, their adaptation, but they have not seen this. They have not been given the opportunity to prepare for it, and now they are being forced to adapt within the game. And so far, they have been found wanting Absolutely, Misfits creating their own meta here, and it looks like SKT will bend a little bit, putting that tank on the bot side. Still, though, the Ardent Sensor in the hands of Power of Evil in the mid lane as we get into game four, and Misfits gain point. We have to see if Maxo wants to keep playing around the bottom side. The last two games, he spent 31% and 27% of his time around Hansama and Ignar in the 2v2. In this game here, on the side of SKT, they have a much safer dual lane compared to the Lulu we saw before. I wouldn't have been surprised to see Ignar come out with a Thunder Cow, but it is going to be <laughs> more standard Courage Good of the point. Colossus. And that would have been quite the throwback because that was something that people used to go for, you know, back before the Alistar reworks, going for these level two all ins with ADAP runes, Thunderlords Ignite. Uh, he is more of kind of a champion that needs that third level and has to play more passive. And I get so happy now when I see two supports with Relic Shield. Level <laughs> one. What a throwback, <laughs> what a change all of a sudden. So I mean, you could you have four Relic Shields. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's hard to feel confident enough to go for the squishier route, right? If you go oh, for yes. the points, these games have been yeah. crazy. And I mean, they have to basically realize that if you're picking a squishy support that can bring Arden Sensor, you're going to get camped. Alistar will just engage, Maxwell will be there, double TP from Misfits as well to use it, and you're going to die in the bot lane once again. So they're simply just switching away from it to see if they can play much more standard. I say standard, actually. Pre-Worlds uh, standard, yes, at least. Yes. I will say also, I think that Power of Evil is going to have to play very carefully. He's playing with Teleport as opposed to Cleanse. He's playing against some with point-and-click CC and against the Jarvan, right? That is such a strong and easy setup to be able to actually target this Karma. And that's the thing I like about Ryze here is, as mentioned in Champs, like the strong 2v2 skirmish you have, and then the mobility you have to take your lead and move it to side lanes. 
if Ryze is executed correctly, he's really good. Most teams have actually failed to do that, and that's why his win rate is so low. You need to be able to snowball with this champion in the early to mid game. I mean, the execution is very, very difficult to pull off, especially in a world against tanks, right? Where, you know, you talk about Karma falling off in the late game, and I do agree, but when you look across the map against, you know, Sejuani and Shogath, that's difficult for them to get through, but here is this level two gank that we were talking about. Buff to buff, and they're looking for PoE. Buff for Blank, there's the knock up flag and drag. Turret shot onto Blank, he's getting a little close. Auto attack from Faker, first blood SKT. Now it's the setup they aim for in champ select. Misfits not able to do anything to protect Power Vivo in the early game. No wards around him, and very important first kill here for SKT. Yeah, and this is your franchise player. This is the guy with the game on the line who you want to have the opportunity to carry. First blood to Faker of all people. Early tier for him when he goes back to base. Maxlor will try and find the level two Javan. Can't really do anything to stop him just yet. There we go. Get in there. Quick board to the face. Why not? Smite goes down. Comes out on top for Blank. Actually could have been pretty dangerous there for Blank if Maxlor was the one to smite it away because the smite would have killed that, denying the heal right. over there to Blank, which maybe then gets a summoner. But here's the play again. We talked about it earlier. This is the setup you want. Point and click stun into the flag and drag. No real way out there for PoE besides warding that play out, besides playing further back, and he didn't have a trinket ward down. There's no flash now for PoE, so the same play can actually happen again. Faker, though, he's moving to top lane, trying to stop Maxlow from stealing away camps. The Cho'Gath versus Trundle matchup is in favor of Cho'Gath in the early game, when it comes to him just pushing in over and over, but once we start getting some items under when he's built here, he can be more aggressive. But no pulverize as the rocket jump is buffered in. Wolf tries to hit that concussive blow. It'll be all right. We're gonna have to track how well Bang is gonna be able to actually manage that. How well he's going to buffer those rocket jumps. And before the series today, I would say, well, he would never actually make a mistake on something like that. But we've seen those mechanical errors. We've seen those missteps coming out from the pressure that Ignar is putting on. I guess uh, near mid lane once again. This is a classic play from him, go back, get Tracker's Knife on your first base, and then just go straight into the enemy jungle, and place two to three wards. So now, you know, okay, Sejuani's not on the, on the bottom side, she needs to be on the top side then, and you can constantly communicate where Maxlor is on the map, and it makes it a lot easier for SKT to lane, without having to fear for the jungler constantly showing up. Blank, easy farming on the bot side. He gets the Scryer's Bloom from Faker to make sure he's safe, you know, has time to either get out or get a push on bot lane if he needs to. And they do have eyes on Maxlor now, so they're gonna know exactly where he is. And Blank has the ability to try to take this away. He doesn't know that Maxlor has no smite, but it is down. Faker is trying to get to the bottom side of that lane. I'm pretty sure Maxlor can see it already. Good flash timing, but they are being put at a deficit with these summoners down now and Blank's ability to get in. Basically just very good vision setup from Blank and then patience hiding in that jungle. Knowing the Raptor camp was about to spawn and could contest it. In the bottom lane as well with Alistar against Tristana. Obviously the kill pressure is slightly lower because Tristana as you highlighted before Zell can always just rocket jump away from the combo from Ignar. But a good thing for Misfits at least is that Tristana not dealing damage when that happens. She just kind of disengages instantly from the trade and it's not really returning anything. And it does still put some pressure in favor of the Alistar despite not having that much kill pressure. Pretty even across all lanes. Huni getting pushed in just a little bit under his turret. He has a wave to push up towards Alfari here. It looks like he's going to use that time to back. Should be able to teleport back to, back to lane to soak that up. Bot lane, Ignar, we've only seen a few bits of aggression from this Alistar. He's got to be much more careful with that ROM. You can see how much more heavily Mystic has been playing around the bot side. How big of a difference it's had. I mean, more than triple the jungle attention has been paid to Misfits lane here from Maxlor. And just look at how well he has been doing in these last two games. And we actually you know, looked at game number one. It was very bang favored, but Hansama has been the benefit of some help and has made good on it. All right, let's see him Maxlor towards the top lane. Who he just TP'd in? Nice rupture to get Hooney up. Subjugate is on, so he's going to be able to live a little bit longer here. It is Pete, or Blank rather, just on the edge. Going to be able to flag and drop and stop the rest of the damage. Now a rupture onto Hooney as he can't instantly turn around. Faker's pushed in, so this is a big chase from Misfits. It's going to be Power of Evil roaming up. They may be able to solidify the kill. Faker gets himself over to the right side, says get in the round warp, oh, and let's do the round warp again. Faker saves 
Huni and Blank gets out. Pau Vivo probably thought that was a done deal in the top lane, so he didn't leave the mid lane early to just go here and cut the trundle off. Instead, Huni gets to walk away. He was not in range to die from the feast. Nice follow through damage. Bot lane aggression here. The shield blocking everything as the Winter's Bite locks down onto Ignar there. And the trade pretty even on both sides. It feels oh, like Baker is, is just refusing to lose this game. He gets the first blood and such a well timed ultimate there to get Huni out here too. And that's a big deal. I mean, when Huni's already down 20 CS in the top lane, if you die there also, you give over that V stack to Alfari, you can really put yourself in such a deficit. It's the same kind of setup though for Misfits where they're trying to protect Choga early. Let's see what happens here around Wolf. Very slow. Lignar still has the exhaust if he really needs to get himself out alive. Power Beaver from the DOE. other side. Mantra Q coming in. No, he flashes in. Doesn't have enough for that, and the Mantra was down. And he used one, it for the shield to get in. One at the time that extra damage from Ignar's summoner spell here combined with the damage from Power Beaver to try and kill Wolf, but he did end up going back to base, stayed alive. So it's a bit of a, a slower game here for SKT. They haven't lost any early kills just yet there. They're not seeing a tower almost die. It's like Catalyst and Tear as well for Faker. They say, let's be in lane for a while here. Let's absorb what's happening, farm up our Tristana, farm up the rest of the lanes. And this feels like such a strong Abyssal Mass game from Faker. Skip the Roa, go towards that more defensive itemization when there's magic damage coming out of all of the top side here from Misfits. It allows you to be so aggressive, to go so far forward against picks like this Karma and really try to run and chase them down. Back and forth, Alfari gonna start chomping down soon to get himself a bit bigger. The rotation from Ignar just kind of hovering in the river right now as Blank's towards the bottom side. They may get aggression towards the top. And again, Blank playing it super standard with the deep vision. Huni, no flash up in the top lane. Look at Faker kind of cheating up towards the top side and I don't think they can really go for this dive, but they may want to try. It doesn't seem like they have the damage. As soon as Misfits get something, which is the level six ultimate, they, they're trying to tower dive. They try to use those alts right off the bat. And with Hansama up here, they would have enough damage if they could find Huni. And he has now- Oh, he's hiding Ignar there. is playing this so intelligently. Huni doesn't know he's here until just now. Ignar skirting around the wards. He didn't know we're there just based on Huni backing away from lane. They're gonna be able to put a lot of damage on that top turret, but Power of Evil's gonna find some aggression in the mid lane. Maxlord just on the side, throws out the all, splits the upright with that, and will not stop Faker or the damage from Blank. Power of Evil does get out, though. There's Maxlord in his back pocket. So Ignar could stay top lane because they were lane swapping anyway. It had a very good situation here where Ansama could push up bot lane and then go straight to top. Meanwhile, Maxlord is coming down. They're gonna look for Faker. Turret. This could be huge. Ignar just on the side. They have to remember Blank is there. They see him now just on the edge as you're getting the roam up from Wolf as well. They can now try to just push in mid. Baker does get out. And Bang will collect the solo gold on this turret. So getting quite a lot there for himself. But just really nice map movement from Misfits. Good uh, amount of damage coming down to this mid tower here as well. If they stay in the lane, Crosser just use this to actually go back, get a good recall, get your mana back, get your items, and then return to the map and keep seeing if you can play aggressive with Ignar, because he's been hovering around, not found an opening, and I really like the Misfits are not staying to actually chip away on this tower. They're valuing the faster recall to get faster back on the map. But what you give up for that faster recall for getting off the map is the free Infernal over to SKT. So Blank sees all these people going back to base, knows that there will not be a contest, and they will pick up an extremely valuable Dragon pretty early on. And this all started with Blank and Faker in the 2v2 in the mid lane where Power of Evil was forced so low in terms of his mana. He used everything he had. He had nothing left to actually contest anything. And Misfits realized, well, can't kill the tower, can't stop the Drake, just have to go back to base and accept that we lost at early 2v2 trades. Despite no kills, it was still in favor of SKT. Rift Herald is going to go over to Misfits. They've had good objective control throughout all of these games and the vision to do so. And this is the funny thing about tempo in League of Legends because it's like a resource, you build it up and then you spend it when you do something on the map. So SKT took their tempo they built up and took an Infernal Drake for it. Then they spent all of it and had to go back now and have to recharge it. Misfits, they recalled early. So they're like, okay, sure, we don't have enough to do anything. Recharge a little bit quicker, get there, own advantage, and use it to secure Rift Herald. And you keep spending it, and now you gotta recharge your own little tempo thing. And 
It's always back and forth between the teams. So what's Fear bomb? Got charge it up. <laughs> there you go. Charge it up. You saw he saw one of them firing. I think that was Han Sama in the uh, the load in was firing his spear bomb. Ignar gets out of this. So I ask you, Deficio, what is that momentum? What's the next builder for Misfits or SKT? Well, now Misfits knows. Okay, it's in favor of SKT because Misfits spend all theirs on getting rift held. So they have to respect what play can SKT make on the map. And that was a play around this river here and around the top side. And they end up disengaging. Yes, they have to use a flash, but they do not die. They have to realize once again they have to recall. So it's still in favor of SKT, and you have to respect them making the play. Yeah, and SKT was looking to make that play around mid lane. So many members coming down here, and Maxlor and Ignar are there. Have been spotted out though. Nice lane ward actually from Baker catching him. And that's something that they, you have to track. You always have to be paying attention to where these wards are dropped because they're actually wasting a lot of time uh, simply from not knowing that the ward was around. So quick clear here from Han Sama. 103 to 121 between the bot lane CS. Huni going back and forth here. Doing what he can to get away from Alfari. Whenever Alfari plays Cho'Gath, then he doesn't care about your counter pick. <laughs> he did this against TSM with the okay, teleport coming in. Double TP. DOE. DOE looking to get himself in a position, looking to get the shield down. Bang jumps right into Maxlor says, wait a minute, this is not my team. Misfits are going to pick one up. Do they deliver it? Yes, they do. Han Sama puts it in his pocket. They just spent double TP, though, on trying to get that one kill against Bang. They were definitely hoping for more. SKT pushing in the mid lane. And it's just a question, what else can you get, right? You have Han Sama pushing up in the top side. You have Ignar still uh, with that Rift Herald, so they could actually drop it. They could look to try to crack one of these tier twos. Very true. It looks like they're actually going to start pushing towards being that sentry wall for Han Sama in the top lane, making sure he's got wards and a few people to go across. And we'll see this one more time as misfits start collapsing. Again, it's just Bang at the moment pushing. Wolf is not even close to actually help him. Double TP spent for the kill. They know they have the Rift Hell they can use after to try and get that big objective in a, in a tier one or tier two turret, but they don't actually end up getting anything extra. So two TP spent for a kill is in many ways not worth it. Would agree. Thankfully, at least though for Misfits, they did get the flash and the heal. Bang did not just accept his death, so his summoners are down and you can look for those repeat plays. So that play is what it's like when you don't wait to charge up and you just use everything, right? Yeah, right there. They just used absolutely everything. They're right back down to zero. And then you got to reset the whole thing. But SKT, because they were obviously sitting with four members mid and then bang alone in top, couldn't really get anything in return. So they didn't really get a big advantage on their side. I would have loved that Rift Hell from Ignar just being placed in the mid lane, though, after Faker and the rest of SKT had walked down to the bottom side. But they held on to it. Valuing also having that really fast recall for the support to go back faster, get more sidestone wards, get a new control ward, and get right back out on the map. And this does feel like a game that's going to go late. And then we have to see, can Misfits actually match SKT in a relatively even game? They do have a gold lead, but it is not a big one. And traditionally, that has been where the weaknesses have been for Misfits, but they have been on another level today. Oh, giving them the okie doke. Kansama gets himself just out of range. They're going to be able to oh, here's keep alive Ignar. on this one. Ignar comes up. It is a quick roam from Wolf, but the rest of the team's behind him. Remember, there's no teleport right now for Misfits. Here's Huni. He's coming with his TP. Ignar they just messed with Bang. Han Sama says, abort! Abort this mission! And it looks like Ignar is going to go down for his troubles of kind of flexing his muscles too much. Yeah, I mean, it didn't even look like Han Sama wanted to do this. Right. Han Sama was sitting there trying to actually <laughs> farm out the wave under the turret, and instead Ignar tries to go for the play, not respecting the teleport counterplay. They're going to lose not only the kill, they will lose wow. the turret, and perhaps more. And it's a slow down game where it's not crazy kills everywhere and constant aggression. Does mean that SKT have a lot more time to think and react properly. And now pushing down for another turret. Ignar had no reason to go for a play there without the TPs available for his team. Yeah, no one was making a roam. No one was coming up there. Han Sama did not even look like he wanted to make the play, farming under the turret. So definitely some miscommunication, perhaps. Oh, getting a little bit too excited. Him. They didn't yep. see him. See what happens in this play. Bang trying to get himself out with Buster Shot. His power has flash. Just Focus resolve, possibly slowing one down. No, they're going for Bang Bang. Just came back up from that river death, and he's going to go back down. 
Also seeing a few things. Infernal Drake coming back up, and we miss Faker's cleanse going down to Maxlor's aggression when that top lane fight happened. So they were trying to go across the map. And the timing of that kill is so big because of the Infernal, as you pointed out, Riv. Being able to match that would be very big. And it looks like Bang may be able to get out as he has a nice rocket jump. The pillar coming in to help, but Ignar flashing forward. Maxlor flashing forward, committing the summoner spells, hoping that they can get more off this. And off screen, you see they will pick up the Infernal, even that up, and grab the Feast Stack as well there for Alfari. Delivering that kill to Power of Evil. Ardent Sensor, a theme's finished for him now as he's working on those boots and a few more items for the rest of the team. And that's one of the up. cool things about Karma is that on this mid lane Karma, you're building relatively cheap items for a solo laner, so you get to the two items like very fast. On the hunt for Realm War buff, but that teleport as well coming in from Power of Evil could be very useful for SKT. Very defensive uh, TP right there from PoE, not even risking anything happening, despite Ansama having Spell Shield, Flash Heal, and Ulti to try and escape. <laughs> Misfits, though, right back in this jungle here. They're looking for more fights. They have Ardent Sensor. It's a huge power spike for them. That's not on the side of SKT. And it's something that will never really be on the side of SKT unless they want to build it up on Wolf, who did go Stoneborn Pack. So he has the ability to, to put that up for his team if he wants. It's certainly nowhere close to as strong as the level of effectiveness, so you're going to get out of a mid lane arm with that item. Like the pillar comes down, they get Power of Evil to push out. Blow his flash, however, so he is summonerless now as he moves on. And Misfits confidence as they keep pushing into these jungles, not wavering. Very good to see that from them as they continue to pressure SKT. Yeah, it's just fun to see how both teams are trading constantly. SKT pushes forward, they can then push so back, and it's, the all. It's, it's turn there, right? Trying to find the ult here, but there is flash available on the side of Bang, and nothing ends up happening. Gold-wise, very even. 1k gold in favor of SKT. Infernal on both sides as well, and at the moment, Hansama is getting the farm he needs. Two items, Art and Sensor, then he's strong. Certainly agree, he is getting a lot of farm, but he's not on one of those super mobile bot lane carries like the Tristana where he was able to jump around, navigate these fights, play super aggressive. He's going to have to be careful. You're playing someone without a dash against Trundle, against Jarvan, against Ryze, against you know all these champions who will be up in your face because Sivir is low range. So you have to get, you know, I think maybe even to one more item past that to the IE where he can start ricocheting to that backline and having backline threat from hitting the front. And those champions like Tristana and the other things he plays, Zaya, have those abilities where the team doesn't actually have to say, protect him right away. He can feather storm, he can jump out. Here, it's the spell shield on Sivir, but still having something to keep himself safe as the team fights. Remember, Power Weaver without a flash here, they're going for him. Gonna get himself a quick shield out to safety, but this is the pressure to mid lane. Things go towards the top side as that is pushing in. And Misfits may try to use that pressure here to push back SKT. Maxlor just on the bottom of the fight. Realm Warp to Hansama. Spell shield goes down. Popped with the Q as the room prison hits, but Maxlor is gonna put himself in front to try and stop that damage. Says all down. Nice rotation from SKT to get the turret, but that's two summoners yes. down on Faker there. So he is going to be very vulnerable on this mid-range mage without cleanse, without flash. Things like the Cho'Gath Feast become so threatening. Oh, he's behind Ignar there. is looking for a play here. They see Rise up on the top side. Will he look to dive? He's ready for the party to put SKT to slumber. And it's going to be the kill on the Brom. Turret's going to be going down. Bang's going to do what he can as Faker and Blank try to back and prevent what's happening. And Hootie's still on the bot side. He's going to be pushing, so Misfits will have to go back to base. They have this threat from the split pusher. Red buff on Hootie, too, so he's going to be very strong. But Misfits, get a kill, get a turret. The gold is very close. SKT right there, not respecting Misfits. The fact they just instantly spread out to the side lanes once again, instead of saying, whoa, there are five members pushing our mid lane tower here. Either you completely abandon the tower and you don't lose a member, or you try and defend it with Faker still there. But the fact he shows top makes it very easy. You can even see Blank is recalling, and he's far away now, so they're not actually respecting the fact that Ignar can do this. Exactly, it just feels like they're not used to these sort of playmaking supports. The ability to do this is not there if you have a Janna support, right? This is an Alistar, and they need to play differently around that. And both AD carries now have those two items and are going to be really ready for the team fight. So we'll see how well they can navigate it. Because while I would say, you know, Bang, perhaps I would favor playing this champion at this stage in the game, he does not have an Ardent Sensor, which adds so much to the strength that Sivir is going to have. 21 minutes in, 3-2, to two, as you guys said, a much slower 
fast-paced game as those tempo charges are being used left and right. <laughs> Teams aren't getting as much as they would expect. Maybe a turret here or there, but cautious about pushing any further at this point. And we've seen the Misfits can close out games twice in a row with an early game lead. We have not yet seen Misfits play a slow, even game like this and best SKT. And they are going to be really hard pressed to do so because SKT is such a strong late game team. So good with decision making, so good with vision control and team fight execution. And that is really where their massive strength lies. And you have to say, though, if Misfits is able to pull off this game, there can be nothing said against them. They will have won in a very even, slow paced game with a meta composition. Well earned and fought very hard for never kind of crumbling and doing what your opponent wants. They are always doing what they have and coming in with their own plays. Now on to Wolf. Maxwell looking to make one of those plays happen. Looks like it'll just be a touch of damage as he gets the stand beside me. Over to Faker, but they follow. That's the Safari ultimate use, and they get the Glacial Fisher back. Brown's trying to get out. Now they Make it up to flash. Faker, and he's going to get chopped down, but the kill goes to Power of Evil. They could actually go to Baron here if they want to try to force it. Faker is down. Wolf is getting sent back to base, and they could make the risky play, but we'll see what the call is. It's the same thing again, though, SKT. They're going for it. SKT are so greedy on the map here. They're just completely disrespecting the fact that Misfits can actually engage onto them. They're starting this Baron now. Disrespecting the fact we have to think how many times has SKT actually been in this position on the world stage. Misfits pushing them to the brink. The top side, Ignar, trying to push Blank out, find him, so he can't get in. Misfits has never continued the Baron. If they are there to try the steal, it's going to be Hooney going down first. They still have to have eyes on Blank, and the wards on the right side are clearing this hit's vision. They still have their Feast to secure this as well. They're going to try to finish it. It is Blank versus a Smite and Feast. Misfits need to time it perfectly, though, or this could be the SKT Bang, way back in. Bangs on the backside. Buster shot almost up, so we won't even have this for the fight if they're turned on. 2,600 for Baron, a lot of damage coming in. Ignar going to be the first to say dive in. Maxor is going to grab Baron. Blank and blank out and it looks like power of evil on the team will head home ignaz stepped out of the baron pit right there popped his ulti to zone away the rest of skt and then they have to smite and feast ready great play by misfits they see skt on the map look at this setup here look at the minimap there's a jungler in the base there's a mid laner near his own blue buff and wolf is walking down the river straight into maxwell's face and that's why misfits can engage and you have to give so much credit here to alfari the presence of mind to know that you can go for the Baron. He does not feast Wolf. He does not feast Faker. Holding on to it because he says, no, we will use this to take the greater prize. We will use this to take the Baron. Faker feeling the pressure from the mid lane here. Only a kill on him and Bang at this point in the game. Five kills strewn across the entirety of Misfits, helping to get those next items, helping to push them a little further. And I really want to also look at Max Law in these games here, because we talk so much about Ignar and Hansama, but his performance on these junglers also being a source of engage has been key for Misfits. This is a guy they picked up in the summer split, replaced Kakao with, and said, we don't care about losing this big playmaking potential of Kakao. We want the brains of Max Law. We want his shot calling, right. his ability to start fights, and he's been doing it so well here. And now we need to see Misfits holding up their end of the bargain in the late game here. Huni on the split push. They have to make sure that they're answering him or committing to a dive. You cannot be hesitant. You cannot go back and forth and bleed objectives into the Trundle because that is the way that you allow SKT back in the game. Trundle has no teleport. Cho'Gath does. I want to see Misfits be decisive. Look to push this with the Baron. Force the Trundle to team fight you. SKT smart enough to not pressure that much on the second tier turret so the play becomes a little harder. But I'm sure they were looking for it. The Ignite on Ignar would have pushed them a little bit further and possibly secured one of those kills. As now Huni has backed, Alfario get a chance to push the lane out, and Misfits can take another look at the map. BOE, you gotta love the confidence buying a Magi's against oh, SKT God. in game point. It's gotta be feeling good, but also playing on SKT. They're trying to find a way back in. Now they have two War Mogs coming out of the jungle and the top lane, and it's gonna be hard to tear down this Misfits team. And the mind game's right there. You point a big red arrow on your head saying, look, I got a soul stealer, you should kill me. And then Hansama is right next to him, winning Surprise! the team fights for his team. Power Vivo. It's been under a lot of pressure in this game, and they tried to shut him down early. He did die once, but then he's actually stayed alive otherwise and tried to play it very, very safe. Let's see Misfits once again, once another tower. 
This one's going to be given up by SKT, but you can only give up so much. All outer turrets now are going to be down for SKT. They will have to make a stand, you feel, at the inhibitor, at those inhibitor turrets, and Misfits is pressing. Just 26 minutes in. We said SKT wanted a long game, but they are at their base here very short in time. This is just hard to believe. I mean, we are watching a team one fight away from the greatest upset in League of Legends history. Misfits have pushed SKT to the brink, and they are looking for the win. The rocket jump from Bang. Everybody trying to keep themselves safe. That's the ultimate down, and Misfits also respecting their own power, knowing it's there. SKT will take advantage of that ult being down. Misfits back away. And it is crazy. Almost everyone predicted 3-0, 3-1. We all did coming into this game here. We look towards another fight. Do they stop, though? We think with the ultimate down that they would back off and finding a bit of damage towards themselves. They are turning away. But with Han Samik here on the hunt, goes age. down. Who can they find? Blink again! It's up! They could be able to take him down! And now it's a 4v5! 28 minutes into the game, Misfits with a beeline towards the mid lane. Yeah, they've cut SKT away from their base. They don't have minions, though. They're looking for kills right now. Alfari right. still has Feast, still has the threat of that Cho'Gath damage. I have not seen a Western team this confident in their ability to engage team fights. They keep doing it again and again. SKT step forward. Moody's gonna, oh! gonna go down if they can get the chomp onto him. It has been knocked. Oh, retreat from the fight. They're able to take down Max Lore. They didn't have minions when they started the fight, and they didn't get much damage onto the turret. Still trying to turn. They keep losing members. Faker tries to go to the back as Ignar stops him with what he can, and the turnaround is happening. Six to six now. Bang! Looking to make it with one more kill, but they need to protect the base. SKT staying alive for now. Super important team fight for them. Afari's gonna get all his HP back with the Warmux here, but he's alone against four members just trying to buy time. And delaying his death like there may end up actually hurting them more as it's splitting up the res timers, but he has bought time. They won't lose more than this, but Misfits, they try to go for the death blow. They try to dive the turrets, but SKT were equal to the task. They had the summoners. They had the ability right. to disengage, and when Huni survived that initial onslaught, you had to feel it was going to be their fight. Let's see it again. If Feast is, av is available here, but it's Wolf getting in front, blocking so much damage here for his top lane and then also in the back line. Bang and Fake are staying healthy, staying alive. And now you you went too far. Certainly did. And with Bang untouched throughout that fight, they're able to find the kill on Han Sama. And that is the backbone of this Misfits team. When he goes down, there's really nothing left for them. But they still are even in gold. They still have the opportunity to take this game. And he now finally completed that Infinity Edge on the Sivir. Arden Sensor is right next to him as well. Baron spawning in a minute's time. We still have the Feast on the Cho'Gath. So if SKT are giving up the river control, Misfits can start the Baron and threaten to finish it very, very quickly. It will always force SKT to be ready to take the fight. Repositioning towards the mid lane. Now the 1-3-1 one, one for Misfits as they charge up just a little bit, allowing Alfari to get this bot wave pushed up just past half. And his teleports up if they do need to get into the fight. Now we're also looking at SKT without flashes on their carries, meaning if there is a fight in the next few minutes, Ignar and Maxlow can actually reach that back line with this CC. And then suddenly you have the AoE from Ansama, the Feast from Alfari to try and win the fight. This front line, though, getting pretty tanky now for SKC. Hansama going to need his last whisper, going to need that armor penetration, yeah. unless they can find a pick here. They are waiting in the wings. Will they go for it? Quite a few scare pings coming out of it. Oh, remember, this well. got nerfed. The pillar no longer gives vision in the brush. So you can't actually see if anyone is in They're looking. The ultimate buster shot back. They're able to get onto Huni here. Subjugate's gonna make him very tanky if he gets the right target. Looking at Baker and looking at where Blank could go here. Power of Evil on the backside with Han Sama as they stand. Han Sama's zone now. Field DPS. Cataclysm from Blank as Max Lord goes down. And SKT start to bring out the fight prowess. Wolf gets himself out alive as Alfari gets taken down by Bang. And we get to see a fight where Misfits carries are not able to deal it. Oh, SKT's coming through with the Realm Warp. Han Sama now taking shots from Bang. He's looking to get 
himself forward in the fight. Explosive shot, not able to take him down just yet, but it doesn't look like SKT stops here. Blank goes in, a few more shots. The pressure's there, the shot from Bang, the kill from Blank. This is gonna be the SKT Baron. They are taking back control of this game. Bang with immaculate positioning and Misfits got split up. They were drawn in to the Trundle, but they couldn't actually stay together. If they want to burn down the Trundle, they have to use the Ignite here from Ignar to actually try and kill him because right now there's no executions calling on the right. side of Hensama. There's no Morel Normicon on the side of Carl Vivo. Boone is getting so much HP back in these fights. And it was such a good fight from the SKT frontline, from Faker, keeping Han Sama out of the fight. And this is the key choice here. As Misfits try to go down from Huni when he is split off from the team, watch Han Sama and watch how SKT's backline is able to zone him out while Bang is free fire. And remember, Faker and Bang are sitting without flashes, but because everything is used on the tanks in terms of engage from Misfits, they never get onto Faker or Bang right there. It's almost the kind of fight where you gotta try and run past the actual front line and reach Faker. Exactly, and Faker just dancing back and forth there, putting threat towards PoE and Hansama, daring them to fully commit to the fight. They really could not get the same kind of damage out that Bang was able to, and Bang now two levels up, has been crushing it in these team fights, has the items and the ability to carry this game and to tie it back up. And what a turn of events. We expected SKT would be able to Bring it, bring it out in those fights. Figure out in the late game how to do it. We never expected it be in this scenario. No. Where Misfits was so far ahead, but SKT is still SKT in those fights. Still able to organize incredibly well. That's, that's the key thing here in game four for SKT. They can't afford to lose this game here. If they take Misfits down though, move on to a game five, suddenly we get the side swapped around once again. We don't know what crazy picks we're going to see. This was a much slower game where Misfits still showed some very good shot calling, caught out SKT multiple times, secured the Baron, but now we get to the late game fight where we're seeing SKT take over. And Misfits, one fight away from ending this game when they had the Baron, that dive gone wrong. The mid lane fight gone wrong, but it is again SKT pressing and Misfits will have their chances to win this game. They still have an AD carry on these three items, looking for his fourth with the Ardent Sensor supporting him and no shielding support for Bang. Luckily though, in the late game, Arden Sensor, while it's never bad, gets technically worse and worse in how much it's actually increasing your DPS because the healing is not as relevant for you. Suddenly the extra damage you get with the on hit is not as relevant for you. It's just the 25% attack speed that really is shining through in terms of late game DPS. And I think it's about the shields coming through that allow you to play more aggressive, that allow that room for error. If Bang is to get caught and crit once or twice here, without the shields, he could go down. It's so much on Wolf's positioning, blocking out that AD carry, his front line, zoning out the AD carry, because Hansama does not have a dash. He needs to position perfectly, and that requires fantastic execution from this Misfits team. Cooney as well having two members, Stoneplate and Warmogs, to choose if he needs to get a good subjugate on. Shield from Misfits here means they want a little bit of damage back. They find Hoodie towards the top. Max Lore's all forward. Everybody, and Bang is just over to the right side. That Ignite has been used by Ignar, and they did not finish off the kill. Exactly, it's not there now for the next fight. Really good for Huni. When he's using that ulti, and he ends up buying so much time in the front line, and you still have to respect the fact that he can deal a bit of damage from turn, and he has a pillar against Hansama and Power Weaver. 49 seconds on this Baron. Could be that last attempt where Misfits turns once SKT gets to the turret. A lot of damage onto Ignar. His ultimate is used as well. SKT is going to go ahead and back away for now. The ultimate being down for the Alistar is so big. It essentially means any fight forward is a one-way trip. You don't have the tankiness through your items to actually stay, stay alive in these fights normally. You really do rely on the ultimate to buy time to zone people out after your combo is used. Now we all, of course talk a lot about Ignar in this series here, but it's important to highlight Wolf in this game. Last pick support for SKT, super important in the draft to see, okay, what are we getting here from Ignar? Is he pulling out the Blitzcrank once again? Then suddenly you might get an Alistar pick for Wolf in this game. Yeah. But instead, he sees the Alistar, he can go for the Braum. That big team fight around the inhib that SKT won to get back in this game, it was him blocking all the damage, keeping Huni alive. And this Braum in the late game fights, we know how valuable it is. We do, and Lord Dominix is completed now for Hansama. He is essentially fully online with his damage items, and the next fight 
will likely be around Elder. They do have Feast to try to claim it, but if you expend that, then you don't have it for the fight. And Misfits are posturing around mid lane. This is a six item Tristana that they're going up yep. against. And time and time again, Faith is put in bang by SKT. They still can't stop Huni from getting all his HP back if they try and kill him in the front line. SKT have flashes now ready on their carries. Ignar is not able to flank at the moment. They're all five together. They're going in on Huni. Onto Huni, throws down the subjugate right away. Looking at Bang and Han Sama. Bang's on the left. Han Sama is in the back line, not able to deliver any damage just yet. And Alfari, Ignar, Maxlar are all very low as SKT pushes forward. Winter Rise fight on Maxlar. And here comes SKT. Oh! Right on top of Misfits, the damage is just too much, and SKT take the game into their control. And they could push down mid lane, they could very well just win the game. We'll see if they have enough time. Almost 50 seconds on these death timers, they are gonna march it down mid. Misfits completely unable to kill the front line of SKT, and Bang are able to deal so much damage from their back. Four kills for him in the fight here. They got a minion wave, they're five members alive, they're going for the finish. One fight away from world's elimination. SKT fight back, showing their true colors. Onto the Nexus turret, 37 minutes in. We're going to a game five. And what a series. No matter what happens in game five, it's been fantastic to watch these two teams battle it out. We got the Braum pick, we got a late game set up for SKT where they were not down 10k gold, where they were not sitting and having to deal with crazy engages happening left and right. No, suddenly they started seeing Misfits right in front of them. They could actually use their front line effectively. No one could kill Huni in this game here. They couldn't reduce all the HP he got back and Bang and Fake had enough time to kill the front line of Misfits. They certainly did, and it was an incredible performance from the carries of SKT. I think Faker and Bang really stepping up when they had to. This game, though, was within one fight of ending for Misfits. Misfits were this close, and this was a slow, late game yes. fight that decided it, right? So really, we have to kind of reevaluate because Misfits can win this style of game, and they've shown that. Exactly. I mean. For SKT, or it, it felt like a classic group stage SKT game. Fall behind a bit in the early game, get to the late game, and then try and outplay the last team fight where you could technically lose the entire game. That's where you turn it around. And they did in this one. Misfits will look towards game five, and maybe they pull out a new support. Well, let's go to the analyst desk, watch them throw their papers around, and see how SKT brought this series to a game five. Thank you very much, Riv. Misfits were one team fight away from taking down the reigning world champions, but Jack, you said it to me off air. Uh. You'll believe someone can take down SKT at Worlds when you see the Nexus Falls. In the third game. <laughs> in the third game. And even then, I'm going to be skeptical. <laughs> right, exactly. Like, maybe I woke up from a dream or something afterwards. Uh. I mean, Jack, I'm right with you. I literally wrote how they did it, and I was trying to make up points here for how Misfits did it, and then there was that one fight. The one fight that would have sealed the game for Misfits. You just and take somehow it, we're here. Rip it with out, it all. crumple it up. Exactly. Uh -huh. We'll get to that. Let's go ahead and take a look at the team comps because, as the casters mentioned, this was kind of a, a, you know, a reversion to the more meta style composition, scaling slowly towards that late game. And the pick that I really want to hit is the Trishana. I, I said it before and I'll say it again. Uh, I felt that yes, it was the Leona, yes, it was the Blitzcrank, but the big pick was the Triss for her ability to break the towers so early and then and then start snowballing around the map. Yes, Sivir is still going to give you kind of that same you know hard push style, but she's not going to break structures in, in the same manner. And I think S. SKT finally really identified that and took that big power and comfort pick away from Hansama. There's a piece of me. Oh, you got something? Yeah, Go ahead. I mean, I think it's amazing that Misfits bullied SKT out of Art and Sensor, but then it's also impressive that SKT then won, right? They knew they were pushed to the limit of having to change it and then actually won needing to play Misfits game. And to say that this was a group stage game is not necessarily a lie, but it does kind of tell us that this is not the SKT that switches gears for bracket stage, which is what everyone was expecting. They're actually almost defaulting back to group stage, which is really worrying, and it means Misfits can still win this series. And so far, this series has gone blue side, and the one person whose performance very obviously increased the most from game to game was Wolf here. On, now on uh, the Lulu last game, he was changing his gold per 10 item at 32 minutes into yeah. the game. He was basically doing nothing on the Lulu. Because Misfits chose blue side, remember, we've gone blue side the entire way through, SKT last picked support. That was a meta choice back in spring season. They got 
the counter pick, or at least for the composition, a great pick to really fit there. And bringing back the Braum for the first time since group stages started was a really big factor here. And I actually think maybe SKT will decide to choose red because it's been the support counter pick, so at least getting space for Ignar to go down playmakers that has really been their downfall in a lot of the defeats. And the final thing I'll call it in champ selects, and by no mean did, means rather did this determine the game, but Blitzcrank was left open, mm -hmm. was not chosen, and to some degree you look at late game situations and you say, just having that opportunity <laughs> to pull someone over a wall, get the pick that they were looking for, that they were setting up for, because you kind of saw it in the way they're positioning around those team fights. They knew they were outscaled. They knew they were fighting an uphill battle once we got to that point. All that said, I want to take a look at that 28-minute replay where Ooh. SKT mounts the yeah. incredible base defense to keep themselves in this game. And there is a question about mentality here. It's been so far the series that Misfits just don't, they're not afraid of SKT. They'll just yep. go deep, they'll look for the big dives. But maybe they get nervous. Maybe right when the Nexus is in front of them, they start to overreach and suddenly they're caught with their hand in the cookie jar. And that's exactly what happens here. And the cookie jar was slammed shut by Wolf. Wolf in the front line absorbed so much damage with the Unbreakable. His timing there was clean. And that's when SKT found a Misfits that had certainly overexposed itself. Yeah, but as you say, that fight goes differently. Wolf doesn't play in the front line. Bang, mistimes his rocket jump. SKT would be out of worlds and yep. Misfits would be in the semifinal. That was the breaking point of this game. We got up out of our chairs after this game saying, is this it? It wasn't. Yep. And now we watch another game. But that's how close it was. They saw blood in the water. They went for it. Unfortunately, it was a misfire. That didn't mean that the work was done for SKT, though, right? That kept them in it. They needed to win a couple more in order to take the game and extend it to five. That's what they did. 36-30 in the game around the Elder Drake Acer Predator replay. Quadra kill for Bang. I mean, the thing is, is at this point, his front line is unkillable. Since they did not win the last team fight, Pooney is just unstoppable. So Bang just gets to sit here and free fire forever. Yeah, front to back is not what Misfits wanted. They went for the Karma early. They were trying to make the plays. They were trying to set the tempo. Look at this realm walk into the back line, and the person who's not there is Bang, who's in the back line with four tanky members in front of him. Yeah, and that was a fight where you really realized that Misfit's team composition had run its course, the yep. clock had run out on it. It's a Karma mid with a Sivir as your main damage source with a Soul Stealer that was on zero stacks because they had died in the previous oh. fight, so they were completely out of options at that point. All right, we're moving to game five. I want to stop talking about game four because ah, still goosebumps. SKT wounded and in danger of leaving the tournament. But as you mentioned, you can never count them out. This is the team that always seems to pull it together in those pressure moments. And for Misfits, if they were feeling the pressure in game four, they're going to feel it even more here in game five. So I'll remind you and I'll remind the viewers, all three of you predicted SKT. <laughs> 98% of Pickums predicted SKT to move on through this game. 60% of Pickums predicted, predicted SKT to win the entire tournament. Yeah. And here we are. So, what do we have to say for ourselves, and what are we looking at for Game 5? I'm still going to stick by strength of conviction conviction with SKT. I think that we started to see a little bit of their mentality break down. You know, Faker, he went for the, the next stretch, was looking a bit a bit mad, but I think he's calmed down. And now that they have kind of this momentum behind them, that we're going to see that monster force that we saw in game one appear in game five. Before you go, I'll just throw this in there. SKT has chosen blue, still no subs, if that informs your opinion at all. It surprised me a little bit because yeah. I thought maybe the support counter pick would be a big thing. I'm in this weird spot, you know. It's Are SK you? Telecom. It's this team. Never bet against SKT. It's, it's That's what I'm Never I bet against hearing. SKT, Korean analyst. Happy birthday to Monty, by the way. Oh, well. <laughs> I think that SKT will do it, but I'm honestly at the point where I'm wrestling with the fact that I have this emotion inside me that says, I want Misfits to win. I want them to be bold and go out and beat SK Telecom, make their name. We thought this year, you know, this year in so many different ways has been about EU really falling away in lots of different ways on and off the rift. They made it to the final of MSI. This would be a capper. This would be amazing. But do you think it'll happen? I already said, probably not. Okay. And okay. here's the thing. That's your instinct. Because we've seen SKT play all of these best of fives throughout time and always win. But when they have been pushed to the limit in the past at Worlds, it's usually been by another LCK team, whether it's Samsung or the Tigers. This year feels different. For whatever reason, they're pushed off of their meta supports at this point. They're not taking support counter pick, which I feel like is an incredibly pivotal part of this series. And they haven't found that other gear from group stage into bracket stage. So all instincts from previous years are saying, don't bet against SKT. All instincts from right now are saying bet on misfits. You're saying everything but what I want you to say, Jet. 
Yeah. Tell me what I want to hear. Be bold, Jack. I mean, emotion. <laughs> Be bold. And based on what I just said, in this moment, I think Misfits will win game five. Ooh, Someone baby. had to say it. And lest we forget, Foskuren will remember, when EDG did beat SKT in a best of five, it was on red side. The last pick was Evelyn. It was that big pick for Clear Love that did it. Who's to say what the special pick is here? And if SKT wins, I don't <laughs> think they'll win Worlds because they are so wounded. Like, this is not the next gear SKT. They have to make it through this round, the next one, and the final. Just based on what I've seen from Misfits here and how they got murdered in game one and bounced back, they won't tilt after that game. Nope. I think they got it. Final also, thoughts, Browse. I mean, it's also the fact that SKT have shown their weaknesses. Like, Uzi is looking at that bot lane. Let's say RNG oh. even make it to face SKT if they survive this day. He's like, I can take that. I can do that easy. Does Misfits have one more bullet left in the chamber? It all comes down to one game in this series. Meet us back here after the break for the conclusion of SKT versus Misfits. There's the knock-up flag and drag. Turret shot onto Blink. He's getting a little close. Auto attack from Baker. First blood, SKT. We win, we win. But team 5 he has no flash. No flash. Nice, nice. Go, go, go. Nice, flash. Nice, nice, nice. I say, Volti, we can go bound. We can go bound. Oh, no, Gengar is in the back. Bang has to retreat from the fight. They're able to take down Max Lord. They didn't have minions when they started the fight, and they didn't get much damage onto the turret. Still trying to turn. They keep losing members. Faker tries to go to the back as Ignar stops him with what he can, and the turnaround is happening. And we get to see a fight where Misfits carries are not able to deal it. Oh, FKT's coming through with the Realm Warp. Han Sama now taking shots from Bang. Winter's Rise fight on coming Max Lord. And here comes FKT. Oh. Right on top of Misfits, the damage is just too much, and SKT take the game into their control.